Hi there, I'm Dr. Bodner. Today we're going to be placing an uh, esophagostomy tube in a cat. Esophagostomy tubes are a great way of giving internal nutrition to animals that either are anorexic or unable to take anything in orally. So cat, cats and dogs that have recent oral trauma or recent oral surgery. So here we have our esophagostomy tube here. Um, it's a fairly soft tube, so which is good for placement of the esophagostomy tube, and we can actually leave it in place for fairly long periods of time. We always want to make sure we do cut off the tip of it so it does not get clogged. Um, the other piece of equipment we have here is our, our forceps, or kind of our, our curved um, caramel full forceps. So these are, again, to allow for cutting into the esophagus and grabbing out the E-tube and pulling it through the skin. Um, other material we have is our suture material for placing a finger trap along the, the esophagostomy tube to secure it into place and of course we have with that our, our needle drivers for doing the suturing. So we have the, the patient positioned in, in left lateral recumbent or sorry in right lateral recumbency um, to have the left side of the neck um, facing up. Um, this is the side we use as we usually want to place the esophagostomy tube on the left hand side um, through the esophagus. Okay so we're just prepping the, the site now some surgical scrub. So we take our, our caramels and put them within the oral cavity. Um, we pull the tongue out a little bit. We push the, the tips of the caramels up and our one of the landmarks we want to make sure we're watching out for is we know where the jugular vein is. Of course we don't want to cut into the jugular vein there. So we again Flip up our, our caramels there and have a, a good position again within kind of the middle portion of the neck here. Um, yeah, so really it is helpful to have an assistant kind of stretch the, the skin out a little bit here as that will make it a little bit easier to make the incision over top of your caramels. And here we're making our skin incision right over top of the caramels. As soon, again, you don't want to make the opening too big. As soon as you see the, the car malt poking through, that's good enough. Again, just make an incision through there. A little bit of, of pressure will allow the car malt to pop through. After the car malts have popped through, you can open them up just wide enough to allow to grab your, your feeding tube here. Grab the feeding tube and pull it through. Here, now we have it pulled through. Now what we'll do is again kind of reposition the car malts and what you want to do is kind of reverse it down into the oral cavity and the idea behind it is as you're passing it along here the end of this tube should flip over telling you that the tube is going into the correct position. So I'm just placing a, a mark at the, on the E-tube here, just because we're going to go take an x-ray right now, just so we know the position that it's at right now and see how far we need to push it in or pull it out. So we're taking a look at the length of the soft costuming tube here. We want it really kind of halfway between past the, the heart and between the diaphragm. So here, as you can see, it's a little bit too far in. So we're going to pull it out um, just a, a small amount, and that should be good enough. The tube is right between the, the diaphragm and the caudal part of the heart, which is the perfect positioning. Um, you can all see on the cat, it has a, a pretty good pneumothorax from, from after the surgery. So the cat will require a thracosynthesis as well. So now that we have the correct positioning, I'm just going to do a Chinese finger trap around the tube to secure it into place. So first we'll anchor down the suture, just tack it down to the skin. Then we'll proceed by securing in place the Chinese finger trap suture pattern over the tube. So once you have about three or four runs up the E2, that should be good enough to have it secured in place and just finish it off by having several throws on the final knot. Keep the suture nice and tight. So we just like to place a clean, dry wrap over the site that gets changed once a day when they're in the hospital. Um, we just like to start with the tegaderm so that we can see the incision site itself so we see how nice and clean it stays. 
before we put the Tegaderm on, however, we're going to put a little antibiotic ointment. And then our Tegaderm over that. I just like, I like the Tegaderm over the Telfa because you can see it. You can see the site. We just do a little wrap with cast padding and then vet wrap and try not to give them too much of a turtleneck so that they're still able to move their neck. And always be sure and back roll your vet wrap so that it's nice and loose when you apply it. So quite often, depending on how long the animal's been anorexic for, we usually start feeding cats and dogs about one third of their RER. And as long as they're taking enough food in we can, uh, and handling those feedings well, we can start bumping them up fairly quickly on the amount of food we're giving them. Just make sure you're following all your feedings with a little bit of water so the tube does not get obstructed. So that's how we place an esophagostomy tube in the cat.